Welcome back to Charles Overview. Welcome, Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome to see you. How's Welcome your week back. been? Good. I trained every day. Great success. Yeah. Classic training. Yep. Bullying. I had some good success in the weights as well. Yeah, we had some good success in the getting weights. Getting strong. Lifting hard. Getting stronger. Getting stronger. Mark McQueen, watch out, buddy. Looking Encher, he's coming. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be fun. Coming over Christmas, it's gonna be great. That's gonna be fun. We did some uh, technique tips of the day with our cameraman. Hope you guys enjoy. Yeah, let's see the still image. (laughs) (laughs) It's actually just about a series of photos (laughs) with audio over the top. All right, we've we've done a booklet. All right, let's go straight. We've both got shit to do, so this will be quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so let's. uh, Overtraining weight slash BJJ. I feel oh. like we get this one all the time. So we do get this one a little bit. All right. So, what would? Uh, how do you know if you're overtraining? I mean, a lot of people they, 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 they'll ask. Oh, like I, I run out of cardio. Or I get to training. I'm already exhausted. I feel tired all the time. First thing to address would be your nutrition. Are you eating correctly? Are you sleeping properly? If you're not sleeping properly, you're gonna know. If you sleep yeah. like shit, if you don't, if you don't have a good quality night's sleep, you're gonna know immediately. Yeah. If, we, if you eat and sleep better than everyone else, you should definitely be outlasting them in basically everything you do. Yeah. So a big point as well is also like fueling yourself correctly before your training. So like number one, are you eating adi- adequate calories throughout the day? Number one. Number two, are you eating the right fuels? So for example, if you're on a ketogenic diet, it's going to be much harder to train vigorously than mm. if you were than if you were eating carbohydrates. True that. Yeah. Because we actually need carbohydrates to fuel our, especially as jiu-jitsu hobbyists and athletes, you need carbohydrates to fuel your workouts, especially before, like just before training. So ways you could look to provide yourself with energy before training is having like things like simple carbohydrates, things that digest easier. Dates, Dates right, like big meals of like rice or like ideally fizzy, like drinks. fizzy drinks. Yeah, exactly. All those things are very like... Yeah. Fast, delicious. <laughs> delicious, and they, they, they provide fast, fast units of energy. Yeah. Or even just having solid meals before, before like an hour to two hours right. beforehand with rice, pastas, breads, whatever. Ideally, like the white versions of those foods because they right. digest much faster and ready, ready, uh, ready to use units yeah. of energy. But I guess to overtraining, I mean, look, you, you get, you're going you're to know if you're fucking overtraining. If, you, if you're just being like, I'm fucked, I'm making zero progress all the time, I'm actually regressing in the weights room you, you need to sort out the, the, what does your schedule look like yeah take take a day <laughs> off just take a day off you, you need to recover because a big part of fucking yeah. getting getting results whether it's in the gym or in the jitsu room is recovering yeah got to get ill once in a while and then you'll, you'll stay away <laughs> yeah you're gonna get sick yeah. uh so realistically though i train twice a week what's it called twice a week weights and then basically do some sort of jiu-jitsu every single day yeah but not always intense jiu-jitsu so if you feel like you're overtraining take some easy days if you can't stay away yeah because you're not going hard every day yeah exactly yeah you don't want to go i feel like you can go hard every day if you get everything else perfect maybe yeah but even then you're probably going to need like the occasional one two days this also ties into the question of like drilling etc maybe yeah. one day I do drilling and stuff don't do that just yeah. spar like, shit of people yeah 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 there you go no? yeah yeah, as far as your people so you don't get tired. <laughs> exactly. So if you are overtraining, you are overtraining weights. Remember, what's the purpose of weights to get to to supplement your jiu-jitsu training? If you want to be a power lifter and you really want to drive your numbers up in the weights room, that's a different goal. Then maybe back the jiu-jitsu off, up the weights. But if, yeah. it's to, if it's to get better at jiu-jitsu, the weights is there to supplement. You, certainly, you can increase your lifts, but it's not going to be the main fucking yeah. priority. A lot of people would would legit benefit from just taking a whole day <laughs> off from going to the gym, to the dojo. And just watching an instructional yeah like you would benefit most people like i improve more when i'm sick than when i'm actually training i feel like yeah because you're recovering better yeah yeah and also but as in when i'm ill as in i'm not even going in at all i'm just watching instructionals. i feel like when i come back i've like actually gotten better the mental gains yeah mental gains yeah okay. if you if you feel like you're overtraining the weights in the weights or the jits take a fucking day off put the mental yeah. gains in yeah put the mental gains in that's our answer there we go but can't overtrain your mental Yep. All right. Would I cross over to MMA and my first opponent? So probably I wouldn't. Maybe as like a very last thing before I retire, but then be, I'll be very old and that'd shit. Be, that'd be an awful decision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if I was to fight anyone, it'd be Conor. Cause Who? Conor McGregor. Yeah, you just get paid there. Because I fucking smoke him. No, because... <laughs> you should probably, you'd smoke him in the Jets. If, match, yeah, if we yeah. did a Jets match, I don't reckon I'd win. But anyway, because I'd get more money. Like, you're not going to get punched in the head for a small amount of money, so fuck You should that. fight Francis Ngannou as your first match. <laughs> it's a welcome match to MMA. 
MMA is just fucking savage, full yeah. stop. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually thinking about like what my life would look like after fighting Francis Ngannou. Lots of straws and being helped <laughs> upstairs and like reminded what I was talking about. Podcast would be over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Podcast would be over. me mumbling in like some straight jacket. Oh my God. Okay. So Probably not. No, you wouldn't. Nah. First opponent, McGregor. Get the payday. Yeah. Easy money. Get the yeah. fucking money fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm the money for you. Yeah. All right. Tactics for an absolute division. Oh, that's a good question. I would go for leg locks. I think... Uh, Big guys tend to be easier to get on their legs and, you know, without the power of their legs, they're not so dangerous. Yeah. Trying to armbar a big guy when he can just like literally just stand up all the time, wherever you are on his body is no good. But if you've got leg locks, they can't stand up most of the time if you have yeah. both of their legs controlled. So yeah, that would be my tactic. Or get to their back. Again, like easier said than done. Yeah. Get to their back. But also it's hard to finish people on the back when they're fucking massive. Because they've, they've got, got such a bridge shoulders. and yeah, big shoulders and like all this kind of stuff, you know. It might be easier to get inside and get arm bars, but then you've got to try and attack an arm bar on a massive cunt. So, yeah, yeah, like attack the legs, get underneath. It's very difficult. Yeah, I think I you think, should be getting underneath. Trying like fucking. Yeah, away. getting underneath is like prerequisite to attacking the legs. But if you get underneath and you don't get the legs, you're just gonna get fucked. Like, and, and some things you might get away with. You might get underneath them and then like redirect their balance, you know, or not have much momentum, but still manage to push people. If they're massive, they might just like, you might just be like, what the fuck, this normally works, and then I'll just crush you. Depends how strong they are as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because they might yeah. be fucking strong and just cross-face you and you're just getting crushed on yeah. the cross-face. Yeah. Some things that you work on people your size just legit will not work on people that are big enough. Big and strong enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and strong. Yeah, they can't just be fat, they have to be. Try and leg lock Mark strong. McQueen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, try and get... Or Golden Ryan. Try and tip Mark McQueen over. Impossible. <laughs> Just so yeah, that's do. your tactic, leg locks? Yeah, yeah, for an absolute division. If you can't do leg locks... Who's the biggest guy you fought in an absolute division? Before? I don't really do that many absolute divisions. I'd probably say the biggest guy I've fought is uh, that Luba Sands guy. I don't think if I've actually fought. I, would I like don't to think I've even done Yeah, don't even ask me. I haven't done any absolute divisions. I've done grappling industries absolutes, but you know... That's a different story. That's different there. I'd like to see an ABCC absolute versus like Victor Hugo. <laughs> Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be fun, fun yeah. Better than Francis and Ngannou. Fuck that. You'd submit him, though, in a Jits Cup. Francis and Ngannou. No doubt, yeah. Maybe, yeah, but... In an MMA? That's you never different. know, though. We're he might just stand up. He might stand up. Just stand up. Apparently, you can do that. Yeah. All right. So, All right. Get, up, get, get underneath. Be fucking... Yeah. Misdirecting people. Balancing. Yeah, like arm drags as well for bigger guys. If you want to get to their back from guard, arm drags work very well because you're not, again, it's unlikely that you're going to get arm bars or like kimuras and all this kind of stuff. We've just got too much like Ability explosion. To yeah, yeah. And like throughout the whole time, it's going to be very hard for you to keep your joints safe as well as do all this stuff whilst they're pressuring and sprawling. Mm. You know, keep working within your frames whilst they're sprawling and stuff. It's going to be much harder than if they're light. But yeah, sure. you can definitely get around their elbows a bit easier yeah arm drags okay all right respond to danaher ah uh, yeah let's give, this, let's give this some context yeah. so a lot of people have been sending up both of us the videos of yeah. john danaher uh and lex friedman podcast where yeah he calls you a uh talented young Irishman. yeah he does actually talented young he's talented a talented young, young Irishman, but he also says cavalier and, and, <laughs> and downright sloppy yeah with the, downright, with, with here the he's getting downright yeah. sloppy with downright his, like, sloppy with his leak positioning so, so let's break that down that was like that was actually a good, good i think good that's video. a fair point I, w I would say cavalier more than sloppy like i was more i was very much focused on attacking let's break down what happened so, so got to saddle Bodoni's kicking on my bottom leg. So essentially he was already out of saddle at that point. Uh, and I was just basically holding onto his, uh, the Achilles grip by holding the outside of my thigh. And, uh, you know, I was aware that he was trying the, uh, he was trying something on my left leg, yeah. like either an inside heel hook or like, or like the thing. But that thing, the corkscrew thing doesn't normally work if you have any sort of like give in your leg. Yeah. Cause uh, you can just roll out of it a lot of the time, but cause he'd already stepped on my bottom leg. I couldn't actually like, scissor my legs to turn and roll yeah because he's stomping on the bottom leg yeah he's which is basically it, yeah. why it was like a very nice counter which is what you're like that's just good details like fair play and like the sequencing which he got everything in place to get the finish was perfect like first stepped on the leg then he got his chest close to the back of my heel then he got his toe like side arm over the top and then finally he got his other arm over and then straight away cranked it yeah, yeah. which is like good uh 
it was just a good move, fair play. <laughs> but yeah, I shouldn't have stayed in the pocket too long, when, especially when I didn't necessarily have too many threats to the legs. I think the way I saw it, it was just like the more time I can spend in leg lock entanglements with him, the more likely I can finish him because like literally the only times I've been, seen him get finished in recent times was leg locks. So it's like, you'd be a fool not to try leg lock him basically. Yes. So yeah. And yeah, that was it. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't necessarily my grip holding onto my leg that was blocking me, holding onto his leg that was blocking me. It was more that he, he was, was stomping, stomping on, leg. Yeah, on my bottom leg. So I couldn't, I couldn't scissor my legs and, mm. and turn out of it. So yeah, be good. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, I think uh, we'll get Cav that Cavalier is fair. Cavalier. That's fair, I'll take that. It doesn't even sound bad. Damn right sloppy. Cavalier, it's a French word. Do you feel like you're getting sloppy uh, in your leg attacks? Or overconfident? Yeah, maybe overconfident, like I wasn't... Uh... To be fair, I just, I just thought that my, my left leg would be safe for a bit longer and I, I couldn't actually like physically see his hand placed over the top of my foot because my knee was in the way. Yeah. So I was trying to like look around my knee, but every time I looked, my knee would come in as well. Got it, got it. <laughs> It's all just ridiculous, but <laughs> <laughs> you win some, you lose some anyway. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Run it back, then we'll be able to tell. Yeah. But yeah, he felt, uh, he felt good. And I didn't feel like he was using too much strength or anything. Like he wasn't uh, good over exerting good. himself or, or anything like that. Do you feel like you were? No, no, neither. But, but yeah. I got finished, so obviously I should have, <laughs> should have exerted more yeah. energy. Yeah. Sure. Or different tactics. Yeah, different tactics, definitely. What would, what would you have done differently? Well, I would have just extracted my leg now. It first, yeah. Well, when he stomped on the back of my other leg and it was completely free, I would have been quicker to extract my left leg and not... Because uh, I was basically waiting to see if he would move a little bit and give me, give me something to work with and he didn't. So yeah. next time I'd just be like, okay, he's, he's obviously very good at leg locks. Just <laughs> remove my leg and maybe not go for leg locks. So exclusively. Cavalierly. <laughs> yeah, cavalierly. <laughs> Cavalier. Uh, Cavalier. Did you listen to the four podcasts with him? Nah, it's four and a half hours. Just a bit. Yeah, it, I literally skipped to the bit that <laughs> was about Bodoni because I, I <laughs> thought I'd get a mention. Not gonna <laughs> lie, I did. It's a big I podcast. might watch it. It's four and a half hours though. It's pretty good. I watched a little bit of the Gordon bit, a little bit of the. That was it actually. I watched a bit of the Sam McNally bit as well. What's he saying about that? Uh, watch the podcast. Ta another talented young Irishman. Actually, I watched it because someone sent it to me and was like. Uh, Oh, he talks about you here and he says you're actually quite smart. And then I, I skipped to it and they're like, this is just another bald Irish man. It's, it's, it's just Sam McNally. He's not even fucking talking about me. It's so good. <laughs> Racist? Uh... Anyway. <laughs> All right, cool. EU seminar tour. I'm already kind of doing one. It's not a tour though, because I don't have a driving license, but I'm going to go to... <laughs> we spoke about this on our last podcast. Did we? Yeah. I'm going to go around... Uh, Germany and that sort of Denmark and these places and teach seminars. No one in France has asked me for a seminar. You speak French too. I fucking speak French like an eight-year-old. So five-year-old French. Five to eight-year-old French. I'm gonna say eight because I did a bit. You know, I, did, I actually did it at uni. So, you know. Man, we need to some, some get you in France, man. Exactly. Yeah. Shout, you know, if you're in France, shout him out. He can do a podcast. Shout him out. Seminar in full French. Yeah. You'll be able to deliver. Would yeah, you to maybe. Deliver I'd have to. I'd have to look up like particular words, like you know, like Back heel on. and yeah, this sort of thing. Like that. I just why would you ever need that in a normal conversation? Nah. But yeah. I could do that. Or I could just throw in some Fringlish. <laughs> just some random bits of English where I don't understand the French. Half, half English, half, half French yeah. presentation. Or I could go visit my grandparents for a bit and brush up and then go That's do a idea. tour. Yeah. You love going there. I love it. <laughs> you love going there. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing so exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the grandparents. Fucking east of France with nothing to do. <laughs> Every year. There's not even jiu-jitsu around there. That's the thing. There's, there's not even... There's weights. There's not even good judo. Really? There's, no, no. There's, and it's France as well. You'd think they'd do some sort of... Combat of sports. Yeah, exactly. They, there's something. weights. But that's even shit, no? Yeah, the weights The French guy well. just yells at you. Yeah, because yeah, he says that I shouldn't be getting tired whilst I'm doing weights. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, I, sh I shouldn't, my, my lungs shouldn't be getting tired. It yeah. means I'm not doing it right. Facts. And I was super setting stuff. I, I fucking, I, I was actually doing very well and he was just shitting on me the whole time. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I hit like my max ever shoulder fresh there as well, which is like 22s. I was, I, oh, I, I shit. I can't do like, and I hit 22.5. You're fresh going there. There's no jiu -jitsu Yeah, yeah, I was down. completely fresh here on board. So I had a lot of energy, but. But yeah, he was shitting on me the whole time. That's so good. Do you know what split squat? This is an easy exercise. You shouldn't be, this shouldn't be hard. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Why are you breathing so heavy? So many times when you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Shut up. You let me, only because he let me use his gym. Otherwise, I would have told him he's a cunt. Love right. that, <laughs> Coach or no coach? 
What's that about? This is for competitions. So oh, okay. I would prefer to have a coach, obviously. But Why? Why, obviously? Because, well, like most of the time, even if you don't like having a coach, you can't hear them, but they're very useful to tell you the amount of time you have left. And also like as an outsider, you can often say things that watching back are fucking obvious. Yeah. Like it, it's very hard to as reassess in a match. It's easy to assess and like have a game plan in your match whilst you're making it. But it's hard to switch halfway through when you realize that things aren't working or like you're losing at a specific point. Yeah. It's hard to like, if, if it's an intense match, it's hard to gauge. Yeah, hard to gauge and change your strategy. As an example, to be like, stop going for the underhook or stop going for this yeah, because yeah. It's, it's obviously not working. Yeah, or like he's bringing his leg back when you do this, so do this. You know, just, yeah. just decent like technical advice you can accept halfway through rather than just like having to make it up in your head. Also, just like random bits of encouragement can be helpful. Come on, Owen. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, well, Ashley. Go on, Ashley. <laughs> they love that. Yeah, so basically don't bring an annoying coach with you because it's just going to piss you off more than they actually add, add value to you unless it's someone like legit really good like Dana who's going to give you great like pre-match insight and then during match they'll be shouting out the correct details and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but most people probably just bring your normal coach unless they're super annoying. Fair play. <laughs> Right, this next question, I guess it's close to this particular person's heart. <laughs> Should you... This is, this, is actually, this is a legitimate question. What was the it is, yeah, question? a legitimate question. Should you inform... Should everyone be informed if one of the people in the gym has AIDS? And Should, I don't know. If, I don't, like, I'm not informing. It's very, it's very personal to that, to that person. Maybe they don't want everyone to, be, to, to know that they have AIDS, but I'll definitely like... You, you should let the head coach know, or you should like at least let the like yeah. the coaches know, hey, just so you know I am like HIV positive or I do have AIDS. Like you should you should definitely let the gym know. However, if you're in that position, by the way, we're not obviously we, we are we have zero medical expertise, so let's just let's just say that so <laughs> I'm a doctor. Zero medical expertise, so get medical help. Like if speak, you have A, is go yeah, to your doctor. Speak to, speak to your doctor about. <laughs> yeah. You should definitely speak to your doctor about this first before taking any of this advice. This isn't even advice; we're just challenged yet. Yeah, but like, it's just opinion. You would you would be taking medicine, which is called prep, which would stop you transferring the risk of HIV and AIDS. So I'm pretty sure that it's very manageable now. Okay, so you're fine. You don't have to tell them if you got prep, basically. Yeah, but <laughs> I'd actually speak to the doctor first. Just be like, should I let people know? Is it transmittable between sweat and blood if I'm taking this drug? I would find out all those final details first, which is very important. Yeah. And then if it's if it's if the answer is no when you're taking that drug, obviously just you need to make sure you're taking the medicine, and then maybe yeah. maybe you don't need to bring it up. Personally, I'd probably just bring it up to the the, the head coach or the owner. And if you have a good relationship with them, be like, hey, look, this situation. However, I do have, like, but get a doctor certificate or something just yeah. to prove that this is the situation as, like, a part of courtesy. That's probably one for Google, though. That's probably one for, for <laughs> Google. Je for Google, Google or a medical professional. Jamie to pull up. Not asking two <laughs> morons. Yeah. <laughs> it's a podcast. <laughs> Let's move on. Yeah. Good, good question, though. <laughs> fair question. All right. Yeah. I would, I, yeah. Go, speak to the medical professionals. They'll, they'll be able to answer. Sick. 16 year old me, who did I look up to technically? Well, I'm pretty sure I was doing the gi, so it would have been people like Leandro. Leandro. Oh, RIP. Yeah, uh, who else? You love that man. I love it. Yeah, he was, to be fair, very good at passing. Like, uh, and it was just super simple, like just running around people and just being really, I don't know, it looked simple back in the day. Uh, who else? I like to watch Lucas Lepri, Rafael Mendez, Mendez Bros. Yeah. I especially like them. All the Baron Buller stuff. I like Keenan. Keenan suits my body type. When I see him sparring, he seems, to, he seems to do a lot of very similar sequences to me. So maybe he's one I should watch a bit more, even in a nogi. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, he's got very similar body type to me for some reason. That's what it seems anyway. When I see him sparring, it's all very relatable. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's who I looked up to. And in terms of, like, in now the UK... Yeah, now I look at, yeah, just people who are winning, to be honest. I don't, I don't have, like, favourites like that. I just, everyone's got something. Who's doing well? Yeah. Who's, every, who's doing well and yeah. why are they doing that well? Let's look it up. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Just try so, and stay informed. It's almost like an encyclopedia you now. You just, like, look at the competition. Who's performing well? Who's winning, who's winning everything? How are they winning? Yeah. Let's copy the things that they do really well. Yeah, because you don't have time to look at everyone. So you have to, 
even if there's someone who like lost who's actually extremely good you can't really you can't take risks and just watch people that are losing but are good you've got to just watch the winners and go yeah. with the blanket <laughs> blanket winning strategies yeah yeah because yeah. i mean like it's winning matches yeah yeah exactly yeah one way or another don't be doing at least yeah. a tactic or something preventative moves don't get stuck stuck up in biases then yeah yeah exactly all right yeah Drop, yeah. dropping out of the uni would it have helped my jiu-jitsu well not really because the maintenance grant meant i could just train full-time uh, Say again. The maintenance loan you get meant I could just train full time. Yeah. So when I say full time, like I was doing it seriously, I was just basically not, not going to lectures and training. Still twice passed. A day. Still passed. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Still passed. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I didn't go to graduation because I didn't want to embarrass everyone. <laughs> <laughs> really high grade. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I think to be fair, if I had trained in London with like. No, I don't know. I feel like it was good training out in Cardiff, to be honest. I had good, I had good training partners. I had good coach there. Shout out Craig. It's obviously worked out. Craig Ewers, yeah. And yeah, yeah, it worked out, yeah. It was Get fun. your fucking degree as well. Like, you may, you may as well. If you're, you, like, unless it's something that you fucking hate at university, then you could probably, should probably consider doing something you enjoy I hated more. it. Oh, you hated it? Well, yeah, I didn't go, so. Yeah. You still passed? Still passed, yeah. Still Modafinil, good. boy. Still, still <laughs> you got on the Modafinil. Yeah, Modafinil. I had to get on the Modafinil. That's a savage drug, man. Yeah, it was. It's like it's like doing MD for work. It was. Uh, it's it like ecstasy for work. Like yeah. Fuck. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah, but if you take it basically, yeah. drug advice: Modafinil early in the morning. Don't study for the entire year. Two weeks out from your exam, Modafinil. Work ten hours a day. Do all the lectures. Do all the seminars. Don't do any reading. Get a third. That's my advice for the people. There we go. Beautiful. And then you can still walk out with a degree that you'll never and use. And you won't have wasted your time actually going to the lectures. You'll never use that degree. I will never use that. Even now, <laughs> like, economics just probably my worst subject. It's changed so much now. <laughs> just read the Financial Times every day. Yeah, just read the FT. That's what everyone says. Just yeah. read the FT. You'll get a good idea just of it. Just read the FT. Then you see a graph and you've got no fucking idea. Yeah, so dro dropping out of uni would have helped. Your circumstance? No. Not really, but yeah, if, if I, could, to be fair, if my parents had just let me live at their house and, because I wouldn't have necessarily been able to support myself from the age of 18 in jujitsu only without either help from parents or, Lines. or maintenance loan from the government, which I was basically using to go to uni. Yeah. I mean, go to jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> tax man's going to listen to this podcast. You know, from HMIC, they're going to come down and you fuck. Well, yeah, they've, they've already... I you. already pay student loans, so it's not like... Oh, okay, so... Yeah, yeah, it's like 6% interest, you know. Really? Yeah, yeah. And they just increase it a little bit each year as well. Like, the interest, the percentage per year goes up. Savage. It could be 10%, too. So. Like, literally, I would never pay that back. I would try and avoid that with all, <laughs> all my heart and soul. <laughs> That's a good answer. Fuck that. them, motherfuckers. So, dropping out of uni, not necessarily... <laughs> not, not necessarily. Yeah. I feel like you could still fucking train. Like, look, realistically, like if you if you if you if you just are organized and you, you yeah. just like you sleep well, you recover well. You go, okay, I'm going to go to these lectures. I'm going to study between these times. If, yeah. if if I want if the open mats are at this time, I'm not going to go to those specific lectures, but I'm going to make up for it for studying during this time. So you can just go open mat, open mat, open mat, open basically, mat, study on the outside. Do you know what I mean? If you're a fucking loser though, and you never drink or go out or do anything at uni, you can do all the uni work and you can. Train for sleep time. and you can train. Exactly. Then you've got no time for anything else. The, the choices I went for was party, sleeping, jiu social, jujitsu. Yeah. You, you could choose three of the four. <laughs> you don't get four. Yeah. Can be done though. Yeah. 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 You, you three of the four. Yeah. Yeah. Three of but four. But you'll be a loser. Yeah, you're okay. Not, not Derek on the pod. Who's Derek? More plates, more dates. He'd be a great guest to have on. Yeah. Is there, have you seen him? I think I've seen bits of him, but I don't know his face. He's a very smart fella. He talks about steroids. He's got multiple businesses. He seems very um, very switched on. He'd be a great guest to get on the pod. Yeah, get him on. He'd be good. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a big following. It'd be tough. Although, we, we recently start getting guests on, to be honest. We're, looking we're getting closer that. and closer we're to getting, Gordon. We're getting closer and closer. Yeah, we are. We are we're getting close, close to Gordon. Gordon now. Yeah, I, yeah, well, I need to check the... Uh, I need to actually check the WhatsApp. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we've secured a phone number. Yeah, we're getting there. We've seen something making happen. Despite but the fake one. We've got some 
you did you keep the fake one by the way yeah yeah, yeah. we can compare we can it to the one that yeah yeah, okay. oh, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe you uh, maybe there was it he's still waiting he maybe it's just a typo <laughs> 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 he's just there on his phone still he's gone fuck why they gone contact with me <laughs> could have been on the biggest pod so we're going to rent out a um, podcast studio shortly we're going to get um, the fight dietitian on soon nice. he's fucking sick working with some UFC fighters he did a podcast with Craig did he not yeah, yeah, he's at the podcast with Craig, and nice. we're sending that this week. He's going to come on to ours. Um, I actually watched that podcast. He said a lot of very similar things to you, like, just need to eat more calories, just go and eat in and out. And then Craig was saying similar things to me, like, I don't get as ill as much when I'm just eating a shitload and all this stuff. And you just and later on in the training sessions, you don't get burnt out, whereas, like, it yeah. feels nice to start with an empty stomach, and you're, like, you're sharp, but then that sharpness <laughs> wears off, and then towards the end, you're like, fuck, how is he? That's the classic okay. question, being like, yeah. oh, why is my cardio just diminishing? Well, first of all, look at your nutrition. Yeah, eat like, properly. Eat properly, fuel eat yourself fuel nuts. yourself correctly. Yeah. And then protein, like protein doesn't just contribute to muscle, like being super jacked. Protein actually contributes to like your overall health. Like, yeah, you expect, like particularly like your immune function, your eyes, skin, nails, health, health like skin particularly, like not getting staff as much. Craig even says that, like since he started eating yeah, properly, he, he doesn't get stuff as much yeah. because like you start optimizing your protein intake, it's going to help your immune yeah. function, your Just skin, everything. That run down feeling will be gone if you it, eat enough. Exactly, yeah. He's, 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 actually, shout out, to, shout out to the fight dietitian. He's got a good course for jiu-jitsu guys. It's cheap. It's like 250 bucks. You, you, if you did that course and like looked at some YouTube like Mike is well. Not that cheap. I mean... I mean, yeah, we, we want him on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> what would be cheap if 250? I mean, look, it's affordable. It's affordable. That's <laughs> yeah, probably better, right? right there, it's affordable. It's affordable. It's, it's affordable. Um, but you can arm yourself. Like you could. It's cheap compared, like relative to what it is. Like if you do that, if yes, you did, yeah. if you did that course, or like the, the amount of the amount of fucking searching on YouTube would take to get all the information in one one yeah, thing. Yeah. Time, it's like worth time, time, but it's, it's worth the time just yeah. to fucking learn how to fuel yourself correctly. Yeah. Why is, why are these things important? If you're if you're disciplined enough to uh, <laughs> discipline <laughs> discipline to actually do it. Then. If you're watching instructionals and you're trying to get better at jits and you're ignoring your nutrition, you, you need you, yeah. other way around. Nutrition yeah. first, recovery, and well, then. So it's nice to eat a lot. Yeah. Great. Fuel yourself adequately. Just eating like a fucking pig all the time. It's bad when you have to, but if you're just doing it. You what do you have for breakfast this morning? Do you crush it? No, not this morning. No, no. I, uh, I just kept sleeping until it was like 20 past 11. I did have a very nice coffee though, <laughs> on the yeah. mocha machine. Oh, nice. Yeah, and the creatine water. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday I had delicious lamb. Shout out Maggie <laughs> on the podcast, my, my food sponsor, my meal prep sponsor. Does she listen to the pod? Uh, she does, yeah. She'll make sure that I'm in the room and she'll put it on and nice. keep asking me questions and say how disgusted she is with me at the end of it. And like, you, you shouldn't say that. And I don't like how you say this, but shout out to Mags. Shout out Mogs. She's when you hear this, yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed the lamb last night. Good lamb. <laughs> anyway, and then we had a pizza as well on the way back and I had two pints. Shout out to Guinness. Yeah, shout out to Guinness, actually. If I'm going to have a pint, it's probably going to be Guinness these days. Because you're a uh, talented young Irishman. Because I'm a talented young Irishman. It's the, part of it. All right, so back to Derek on the pod that he will come on. We just need to start getting guests on, to yeah, be honest. It's, time, it's, it's time. This is episode 11 now. I can't believe it. We could start small and get someone like local or even just some random man off the street. Crackhead. Yeah. Local crackhead. That'd local crackhead. Any local crackheads that want to come on the podcast? So we need Raj, Mark McQueen's coming on. We've got the fight dietitian. We used to make all these That's things That's a good lineup so far. Yeah. Well, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. is still coming. <laughs> <laughs> you should only eat. quality. Maybe I should. Oh, uh, yeah, I did message him. He doesn't, I don't think that's his real account. He didn't reply. He won't reply. <laughs> so good. Haunting gym but, but, but yeah, it's time to get some, um, some guests on. Sorry, next question. Ha haunting gym roles. Haunts are roles that have haunted both of us in the gym recently. I imagine you rolling with Roger. It's haunting. Yeah, he's Roger's haunted. Um, it's because he'll call... Yeah. You'll be in the room. Either he calls you out straight away, which is actually nice because you have lots of energy. So you can... It's like roll like two or three. Boy, Charlie. And then you're like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> And then you just, you know, inevitably he's going to get mount or back and he's going to keep <laughs> you. <laughs> and he'll keep you there as well. Yeah, so like yeah. you'll be in like bottom mount. Usually I'm a pussy and I just give up the back. Yeah. <laughs> but some, then what he'll do, he'll just he'll push you back to mount. He'll, he'll like cross you and then 
dark room you and he'll like make sure that he's he's adequately dark rooming you and he'll blow like air into that <laughs> into that space so you're, you're, i was doing that once. so you're breathing in you're breathing in his carbon dioxide so it's even Does worse because brush his teeth directly before a session each time i'd imagine so yeah because if you have a coffee and you're breathing coffee you know Potentially whatever, bro. <laughs> Down someone's whilst they're like, I'm just worried they'll fucking vomit on me sometimes when I do that. I think To be honest, that wasn't my most haunting round. My most haunting round was when I was a white belt and I was like, Yeah, I'm a big unit, I'll take anyone. And I went up to one of the black belts in the class, also a big unit. I was like, let's roll. And he goes, What belt are you? I'm like, white. He goes, All right, let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> then he got absolutely <laughs> fucked. He's- Fucked me up, man. <laughs> like side control, like fucking just like, w- w- what's that where you get like full, full, like oh, legs are out yeah. wide, like a cradle position. It's just a kezagatami is the Japanese yeah. term. And, and he then. fucking just kept holding me there. And I was they like, call it the soul oh, crusher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like, I should do that more often if I want to just bully people. Just kezagatami. He was bullying the fuck out of me. I was trying to, mo- I couldn't really move. a really good idea, yeah. Just pin me. Pin me yeah. for like three minutes there. And that was, yeah. that was not fun. I've been enjoying just cross facing and keeping half guard, not letting people give up side control. So you get you're, the cross You've been providing the haunting rounds. Yeah, yeah, and if I'm talking about a haunting role, I would say the most the most haunted I ever get these days is wrestling with Sylvie for a long period of time. There are periods where I'm just like, what? Once you start losing the wrestling battle and you get broken down, it's only downhill from there. Like you can get some counters that are very like judo y, but you're not gonna out wrestle someone who's basically better at wrestling than you or just wrestling and especially much five. stronger yeah wrestling since he was five and like all healthy and shit since he was zero you know shout out to sylvia he's a fucking big unit, man Mon- he's a big strong unit. he's a monstro so that's that's haunting for him why is it haunting that, well it's just like the most haunting role i've had recently the, the hauntingness is from being like really tired and getting collar tie rags and you still have to keep your head up and uh, keep etc it's just tiring yeah it's no, just the lower back Crushing. Sure. But let's go through the most haunting rounds. Surely there was at some point in your jiu-jitsu career where you're like, this is horrible. Like, this sucks. I can't wait for this round to finish. Maybe back when I was like a white belt, uh, probably, yeah, just yeah, the worst position I can think of is like having my, having when someone wears a loose t-shirt and like my old coach, Felipe Souza, who was also a Rogers student and used to teach at Rogers Old School. And then he, uh, <laughs> he stole loads of students and ran away or something. He, he ran and started... BJJ School UK and uh, yeah he used to do the same dark rooming thing to me and I didn't even realize what it was at the time like he would put his t-shirt on my face and I'd be like you know ah, panicking and shit <laughs> one time I was like is that a submission he's like no you can't tap to that oh, he's and ever since you. then I've, yeah I, ne- I never actually tapped to a, a cardio tap like that though I asked oh you're like should I tap to that yeah I asked is that a submission like I was just more like a question because I was like damn this is so fucking is he doing this on purpose like this is horrible yeah, yeah. And uh, other times where I've felt haunted were just being extremely tired in competitions, you know, having terrible cardio and blowing my wad in two minutes. And then there's like another 13 minutes of competition that I'm just recovering for for ages and like surviving in horrible position. And then eventually I get enough energy to go for sub attempts. And it tends to actually work out pretty well, but that's haunting. Was that a recent competition? Uh, no. Like, I'll give you an example like John Mafflin. I had a match with him ages ago. And um, we literally had like five splits before the match. Yeah, five splits? <laughs> with some guys from Wales. How did that happen? What well, was the decision? They, they just saw me there and they were like, Do you want to smoke some Hey, Beth, you want to go have a spliff with us? And I was like, oh, you know what, fuck it, go on. And then they like each pulled out a spliff. So it was like already that many. And then we had to wait longer. So I was like, fuck it, just have another one. And then, yeah, I went and had the match. And it was going well for the first. It was cut into three. It was 12 minutes cut into three four-minute sections. Right. And I would say the first four minutes I was dominating. Second four minutes was pretty even. And the last four minutes was How? like me. Comp- and it was only pretty even because I was already completely gassed. And then the last four minutes I was just bottom out, like essentially just bridging and stalling every, every. And then eventually he tried to do like a back step and I counted and got his back and finished him. But that was haunting at the time. I was very tired. (laughs) Like, very tired. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Just being really exhausted is haunting. And super stunned. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, the stun was okay though. That's actually, yeah, that's what would make things haunted. When you're fucking tired, the guy's better than you, and you're like, I'm so exhausted, this sucks. Maybe it was because I was higher then. I'm thinking about it. The wall's closing in because you're paranoid. Oh, no! What have I done? <laughs> 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 Why 
I sign up for this. So yeah, no, I don't smoke on competition days because fuck that. I would like to get super stoned and roll. I feel like I'd just oh, be you should definitely roll high. I'd be yeah. terrified. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, roll high. It takes a while to get used to it. But yeah, roll high. But just competitions, I think it's better to just be fucking evil and on it. Yeah, you need to be on. Yeah, so yeah, no so more. So you sign up for a competition for to be on it. Yeah, and also, it. yeah, obviously just lungs and that. Just make sure you don't smoke for a long time before competitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, key. So that was a... Uh, that was a good question. Haunting gym roles. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> BJJ profit with under 100 students. Can a gym profit? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, pretty easily. Just do the maths. I think uh, depending on how much you pay for rent. I don't even have a gym, so I don't know why I'm speaking so factually. But we did a bit of maths anyway. How much is the, like you know, upkeep of the gym, basically. 100 students paying 100 quid a month is 10 grand a month. Like, if, you, if you're paying more than 10 grand a month in rent, then you've got a very big space and you should have more than 100 students. Yeah, <laughs> also, most places literally have so many students that are just on the payroll that don't actually attend. Yeah. Like, people that do jiu-jitsu because they're paying for it weekly and they've, you know, had a little spate with it. Yeah, but, they'll come once or twice. Yeah. Yeah, and you can also sell, like, things on the side. You've got rash guards, you can yeah. fucking... Like, pro- it, like protein shakes, that's, that's, that's a no-brainer for yeah. gyms, honestly. Yeah, yeah. No I, vending machine, yeah. Pro- yeah, protein shakes, yeah. Yeah, I'd say shakes are big, man. Yeah. I mean, like, if you just get someone, like, receptionist or something, or even you can make it, like, just make it a part of the system. Yeah. Because it, it, it is beneficial. As you finish as you finish jiu-jitsu, you should be having some kind of protein. Yeah, yeah. Like, within that fucking hour, Yeah. ideally. If you, you can rip people in. off of water, electrolytes, everything. Exactly. Make it, make everything, make everything at once. And sell that sell that protein shake for five quid. Electrolyte, like put an extra quid in there. Make them buy oh. your rash guards. Make them buy your rash guards. You can fuck yeah. If you're a good coach, people will come. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. To be fair, like under a hundred students. I mean, just depends how big it is. Like, some gyms I teach at like very small, like let's say nine, eighteen, twenty-seven, thirty-six mats. Yeah. Basically, square mats to go on, which is. But let's say like the size of this room, like. Knocking down these like these particular walls. Yeah, like you could you could easily have a hundred student academy in here. Yeah, yeah, they they not, would have not, to, a lot of them would have to sit walls. on the edge though. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Like really, you need like a three by three to roll two people. Okay, so three, it's like three three meters. I would say it's four point five meters squared per person. That's what is needed. Right, four point five meters squared. And so then you need can... like fifteen hundred two thousand square foot facility. Yeah, which is pretty big. We're not like huge. Yeah, in London. Yeah. Not yeah. expensive, but you need to find the right place. Every, yeah. Everything can be found. Also, it's like it's like literally quite expensive to train jiu jitsu. It's like hundred quid a month. Is like average Absolutely. in London. Yeah, it has to be that. Yeah, it has to be that. And I then hundred students, ten k. Depends on yeah, depends on the gym. Like who, who you go and see. Like if Owen Flanagan and Sylvia are the coaches, you'll definitely pay hundred quid for that. Yeah. You just chuck and chop every day. You're gonna get better. Also, and yeah, hundred quid a month, thirty days in a month, three quid a day, and you get straight. How much money do you fucking spend on the piss on the weekend? Yeah. If you go on the if if you happen to go on the piss, e- yeah. like easily, tw- like a dr- round of drinks could easily be like 30, 50 grand. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, I don't think the money is really really. People complain about the money, but everyone's got hundred quid. If you don't have hundred quid, then just go to work. Yeah, do some more work. <laughs> just go to work. Just go just, begging on the street. It, yeah, become a crackhead. <laughs> just become a crackhead. Yeah, so yeah, definitely, you can definitely profit. Yeah, I think that's pretty definitely. easy. Definitely. Like, uh, and, and also, of course you can profit, because like, how do you think all these gems fucking make money? You have yeah, to, yeah. You, at some point, you're always going to have less than 100 students. I actually maybe, like maybe I guess they're just asking for ideas. Yeah. I feel like it is actually quite, like, jiu-jitsu gyms are quite easily profitable. You just need to find a good space. Like, like, like all the gym owners I speak to anyway, they're always like, finding a space is the hardest bit. Finding a bit and then yeah, finding the right space. Like, the rates, so it's the rates, the rent. The, the rent. Um, yeah, finding right space. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Find a good space, then that makes sense don't for you be a and shit your coach. business. Or if you're going to be a shit coach, just make sure you run a cult and not an actual gym where people are welcome to come and go. It's an actual cult where people aren't allowed to leave and you know, it's true. call it a family and all this kind of stuff and make sure that they can't roll with high belts so they don't realize how shit they are. <laughs> oh, when I run a gym, I want it to be a fucking cult. I want it to be fucking weird. I, I want people to oss and everything at me. Professor, I want everything. <laughs> no, like deference. <laughs> It'd be funny what's, for a what, bit though. What's your goal? Like, okay, what? What's your goal for an academy? You've already spoken about this, but let's go over once. Yeah, okay. So, I do want it to be kind of cultish. Like, everyone has to change their lifestyle. You know, I don't want some guy who's just coming in. He's just like clearly doesn't get almost fuck. embarrassed about being there, and then fucks off. It's like, okay, well, listen, mate, you clearly enjoy the sport. So stop pretending you don't. Right, just show up and. Be a fucking jiu-jitsu nerd and get really good and also get really strong 
and then we can all go out and smash competitions and that'd be good fun yeah that's it like create a team of fucking savages yeah. i'd say the best days you have in, in jiu-jitsu are like competition days where your whole team competes and does well and like you know there's ups and downs the coaches compete and the students compete and there's like oh this guy did fucking well even though in the gym he's shit or yeah, yeah. or oh, i can't believe this guy lost and it's like a reality check for someone and yeah, everyone has a great time, even if you lose. Basically, just create like a, the ultimate facility where everyone gets super strong, super good at jets, yeah. and has a healthier lifestyle. Yeah, and you also want to separate like, unfortunately, you probably need to do kids classes, but basically, and like, and like noob classes. But ideally for me, I wouldn't be teaching like- The kids yeah. or the noobs. Yeah, if I was teaching fundamentals, I still think teaching fundamentals is hard and it's not something that should be delegated to like a, a blue belt because they tend, like the fundamentals I feel like are the hardest bit to get like precise, so. You need a good black belt. Yeah, you need a good black belt to teach the fundamentals. Why? Like, yeah, because it's hard, basically. All, like when you say fundamentals, it's stuff like, like basic sort of uh, self-defense positions almost, where it's not gonna be inverting and all this, or like flexibility requirements or sport jiu-jitsu. It's more like real useful jiu-jitsu, like, part, like uh, doing jiu-jitsu on people that are reacting with just like bridges and pushing and bench pressing. Spazzy stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's hard to teach and and yeah, and there's a lot to it, so. Whereas, yeah. Also, if you teach if you teach people from the early the early onset, like yeah. fundamental concepts, it just stays with them for longer. Yeah, and if yeah. they have an understanding of fundamental concepts as they get as they get better and better and better, yeah. they always have that to, to, to rely on and fall yeah. back on. Yeah, stuff like teaching a white belt how to stand up in close guard. Yeah. Like, that's actually very hard for them to get correct. Like when they drill it on you, some people you can feel like, mm, like even though they think they're doing it right, you can feel like if I just pull my knees to my chest and we were sparring, you would fall. Some people actually get that it's like a fucking workout to stand up in close guard when you yeah. first start. So yeah, I think some of it will also be conditioning. Like when I first started, I was quite weak. So just like standing up in close guard was quite tiring. So he'd make us do like 10 stand ups each time with good posture and then sit back down and then 10 stand up all yeah, over yeah. And again. Coming to jiu-jitsu strong helps them. If you're, like say if you're a fucking savage deadlift that's so you're gonna yeah. progress way faster. Yeah, exactly, yeah, because you don't have to like, you don't have to work. You can just stand up. Yeah, you just get more goes at the move, I guess, because <laughs> you're stronger, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What weight were you when you first started jets? 52 kilos. Oh, what age were you again? 16. 13 or 14. 14, I think. Whoa. I was quite light at 14. 52K, jeez. 14, yeah. Wow, man. Might have been 58, but I think I was 52. Wow. I think Might I, have been 58, actually. I think I was 80 kgs at 14 or 15. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, then I slowly crept up from 58 to about 74. Then I stayed at 74 for a bit. Then I yeah. went up to 82. I stayed at 82 for a bit. And now you're a plum Now we're fucking 90. <laughs> Um, fucking yeah big chicken do you know who Tai Tuovasa is yeah of course you do yeah yeah there's a photo of him he used to play professional rugby with some of my mates <coughs> back in Sydney yeah he was like 100 kgs at like 13 13 years old fat shit just crushing people in the ju shit. junior rugby league I don't know I thought I ate, I ate so much then as well but to be fair, I was playing RuneScape for like two years straight. So <laughs> I didn't deserve to be anything more than 58 kilos. But yeah, once, once I started training, I was eating so much. Like I'd go home and have like and like Pasta, six bowls bread. of cereal and yeah. I'd still feel hungry and I just wouldn't continue eating because I'd just be like, am I just stealing all the cereal in the house? Like my dad kept being like, why don't you just eat something else instead of cereal all the time? It's like, it's not good for you. And I was like, milk is good for you. Stealing <laughs> all the cereal. Yeah, yeah. Kids eat so much food. Yeah. Nice. And I still retained exact weight, like. Nice. Maybe even, yeah. Next question, we're on a tangent. I don't even remember what we're talking about. Uh, Students. Oh yeah. Yeah, fuck knows. All right. All right. It was something about fundamentals, wasn't it? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, separate classes. my ideal gym. Yeah, it was separating the noobs and the thingy. And, got it, got it. Yeah, because you don't, yeah. Anyway, who is less natty? Didn't really understand that question. Uh, Both of us are natty. Yeah. Leg entries versus headquarters. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. So what I like to do is de-weight their inside leg. And then if they overreact to try and put weight back on that leg, then you tip them back towards their outside leg and try and underhook that leg. And then uh, basically we, we, you want to- We did some of that this week. You basically want to get more as much, because they normally it's like float passing, right? So it could be headquarters with their hands on the floor. It could be headquarters where they're kind of, kind of sat back. If they're sat back, I'll tend to like push and sit up and try and go shin on shin. You and don't if, tap 
tap, tap, tap. Yeah, bump, bump, bump like that. And then if they're leaning forward, there's no point like just bench pressing <clears throat> them over the top of you. You want to like take them north of you so there's more weight in their hands and their legs are lighter and then you can invert under them whilst they're like basically planking on the floor on top of you. So you want to basically make them spread out and then move around them to get your leg entries. And that's my tip of the day. We should do that, Tim. We'll do that tip next, next time. Next, next right. time. Ne next time. We'll Great question. Tip. Next session, we'll answer it properly. Yeah. <laughs> that's a key detail with the taps rather than just one big fucking push. Yeah. Tap, 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 yeah, tap, Yeah, because then tap. you can time the, the pushback better if you do like a little bump, bump, bump. As soon as they push back, you feel it, go. Other than if you do one massive one, they might just fall over and you've kind of expended loads of energy yeah. and you're not ready for the follow-up. I was showing Folly. my dad um, Jocko Willink's gym in San Diego that he was like, yeah. he's, he's a fucking high level black belt as well. Yeah. He's like, whoa, this is great. This is really annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he crushed me anyway, but, like, <laughs> but it, so that, I, I did get a nice false through eventually. I was like, yeah, I went tap, 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 go false through. Ta, ta, ta. Just tap it. Ankle sparing recovery. Well, you come to the right person. Uh, I would say to go to a physio first, but because it Ross depends Rehab. on. Yeah, roles and rehab, the physio, physio man. If you live in London, go shout him because he's got a very good approach to physio, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, so it depends how you've strained your ankle, to be honest. That's a pretty broad. I would say you want to find like... Speak to a physio, man. Yeah, speak to a physio, to be honest, because it's just all going to be different. Like, how many different ankle sprains are there? There's like a hundred. Grades. Well, like, it just depends on the grade. There's yeah. a grade one, grade two, grade three. Depends what you can and can't do. I mean, look, you just want to get as strong as possible. Get, yeah. get the range of motion back in. Speak to an injury expert. That's the yeah. best way to go. And then just... You can try and find like exercises on Instagram and stuff, but you, until you actually get an assessment and know exactly what is wrong with it, because you, you might even be changing your movement patterns without even realizing it uh, to compensate for your injury, which I, I do a lot, so it's very important. I reckon you get a physio and, and make sure that you're not changing your movement patterns too much. You're just actually recovering and going back to it. Because once you start changing movement patterns, it can go up the chain. It can start yeah. affecting the knees, start affecting the hips, start affecting the lower back, and then, yeah. then you have more problems. Then you get up. fucked, and so then literally everything in your body will be fucked over 10 years from one little injury that you didn't true. recover properly. That's true. For example, big toe. Big toe. If you, if you get a big toe injury, you're going to fix your big yeah. toe because you're going to be it's fucked. Very, it's going to fuck your gait up. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, it's legit. If, you're, if your big toes are fucked, you can't arch your foot yeah. properly, and if your foot, especially if you're lifting weights. Yeah, yeah. You, don't, you don't have a good loading pattern. Like you say, if you're like you're going onto the outside of the foot rather than keeping that big toe down and creating like a nice mm -hmm. like tripod foot, it, it, you can really inj seriously injure yeah. yourself. So your hips are gonna start like compensating, aren't they? As well, if you're not balancing on your foot properly, you're gonna start wobbling and shit. The hips exactly you're gonna uh, get fucked. I would say this covers any injury. Speak to an injury expert. Where like neither of us are injury experts, but like yeah. speak speak to the fucking someone who who's trusted, who, who, who has gotten yeah. results for either friends or for fellow yeah. jiu-jitsu members in the gym, go speak to them. s &C or jiu-jitsu? <laughs> <laughs> That's the topic, or just crackheads and shit talking, but you not just, like genuine medical advice but, about AIDS and <laughs> <laughs> ankle sprains and not the... Uh, it's true, stay in your lane, man, because there may be some good <laughs> things. There may, no, it's true, like when I was a PT, I remember some campus, I would try and be like, I went through a phase of like, someone come with an injury, and be like, yeah, I'm gonna try and do all, like, you need to learn to stay in your lane. Refer out, <laughs> honestly. Refer out. I don't, I, yeah. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about when it comes to like serious injuries. So just, just go, to, go see someone who does, yeah. get the approach, and then go back to a yeah. PT or they, or they yeah. get their ideas. Get a recommendation for a physio as well. Don't just go to the first physio you find online because they'll be shit. Go, go find a recommended physio from someone that also does jujitsu. Hundred percent. Key. How to develop good guard passing? Watch instructionals. Watch instructionals. Uh, you can think of it, so you can, you can start to separate it, guard passing into like loose passing, where you're going around your partner's legs, and then tight passing, where you're going through your partner's legs, or in, like in between them some, somehow like that, or like pinning, you know, pinning them to their body somehow, and just going just about around them. It's kind of a combo of loose and tight passing. And, uh, and yeah, getting really good at chest to chest passing. I feel like most of the time in Nogi, at some point, if people are good at keeping their knees to their chest, you're gonna either have to go to north-south or you're gonna have to enter a half guard. So I would say getting really good at consolidating a pass from north-south, leg drags, half guard, are the most important skills to get, basically. Those, those three, we drilled those three a while ago. So it's like, let me spoke about this in a recent podcast as well, how options to go from. So it's like, yeah. the knee cut doesn't work. That, uh, yeah. the, 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 yeah. Underhook drag doesn't work. Great. Good, uh, Go for the leg drag. That doesn't yeah. work. Go for the back step. Yeah, back that's step. actually a good like 
specific one, but even then, let's say that, that started from De La Hiva, so you could say that you're already kind of doing tight passing because you've engaged in the guard. Oh, I understand. But yeah, I guess because you do a leg drag, it's kind of loose passing because then you're going around the legs. But yeah, for example, like tactically, you could say, I'm not going to let him entangle my legs whatsoever, so no grips on my legs and I circle around, or I'm going to let him grip my legs and just use underhooks and stuff to counter that, uh, or I'm going to... Well, again, north north south is is basically loose passing again, but it's just mm, like exactly. you either go leg drag or north south, or you go straight to knee on belly and they turn and you get to the back. Jim Carlo got tried the north south pass you going tight. Uh, yeah, he almost got the double under scoop, but yeah, basically I, I, I was watching his matches and I was aware he he does that, so I, I use a bit of energy there to escape yeah. or just make sure. And yeah, I was uh, got on the legs there, so yeah, when you go to north south, you're actually yeah. your knees are pointing at their hips, so as soon as they engage their legs. You, you can't you, scroll you, so effectively. You went to saddle there. Yeah, you yeah. You manage to get your knee around. And yeah, if they, think if you're in like, if they're controlling your heel, you're not going to be able to sprawl and their hips are pointing at your knee. You're instantly in like some vague danger. So, you know, you get the benefit of basically being able to push their legs away rather than like throw them to the side or like pull them away from their chest. But on the downside, you get, sometimes your legs get entangled much easier from north-south if you're not careful. And uh, there's also a chance for like choy bars and shit like that. People going for your arms when you're pushing. Giles is doing a lot of choy bar shit at the moment. Yeah. If you watch Yuri versus Giles, okay, that was like, in some ways it was a boring match because, because of the way Yuri was passing. But actually Yuri did a really good job of like, like stifling Lachlan's like uh, north-south guard that he liked, like K guard basically. He's, Lachlan's very good like at playing from from upside down, like you're over here and he's framing, getting his knees in and, and re countering the legs and the arms. Yeah. But Yuri did a really good job of like burying his head, sprawling, but also keeping his hips like high enough that Lockton wouldn't like slide out the back. So yeah. that was actually, that was actually a really good match if you want to watch North South, the uh, uh, V North South guard and the Cade one as well. Sick. Yeah. Very good matches to watch if you want to watch that from ADCC. That's a good shout out. <clears throat> and yeah, other than that, watch instructionals. And watch a very you know variety of instructionals and then also you gotta just i would say record your rounds and like get get a really good gauge of what you're actually good at in reality rather than what you feel like you're good at there's a lot of times in jiu-jitsu where you can feel like this was like an okay sequence and it's just normal like part of play but really it should always all be like your ideal goal would be like zero energy use and winning in seconds every single time yeah, yeah. with like pure control <laughs> so if you're not doing that there's obviously somewhere to improve yeah yeah, yeah that's the way i see it Huge. so you know what you know where to work on basically on what's not not working so smoothly be realistic with yourself figure, yeah. out, figure out what you actually need to improve on yeah and that comes if someone records the rounds again just get them to send you the recordings of the rounds because they can be very useful and you'll find out very quick what you need to improve on that yeah and you might be disappointed when you watch yourself roll like damn that was less impressive than it seemed at the time that's the point shout out to that Danaher podcast as well because he talks about J Giancarlo comes to the gym and he just realizes like fuck I'm actually shit at all of this at leg and, and yeah, time, yeah. And it starts again it's like that humbling process of just being really shit at something but just trying to get better and better and better and better yeah yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's all, like he's already naturally intelligent and good at the sport, so he just needed a good coach to sharpen things up yeah. and level the playing field with the students there. Yeah. All right. Last question. Gabby Garcia less trust or Galval sized Ricky Rishi Sumac? Sumac. I would actually rather fight Liz Truss. <laughs> <laughs> She's so dumb. Bro. <laughs> I actually hate that she is the prime minister. Yeah, she's so fucking dumb. She's like, at least, like I was saying before, basically, Boris like pretends to be dumb to get the pub man's vote. Yeah. But he's actually probably like clever and evil and conniving. Yeah. But she is actually a fucking idiot, which means that she's like, I hope she's a puppet for some fucking like Illuminati organ organization. <laughs> but I fear that she's actually just out there on her own, like actually making decisions. It's crazy. <laughs> it man. would kill me if she makes decisions. What a shit Please show. no. Please not lose trust. Time of this podcast coming out. Least trustworthy. Econ economic disaster. Yeah. Let's see, actually. You know what? I don't know. Let's timestamp this. This today is, what is it? October? 16th of October. 16th of October. Let's see what happens. The future will tell all. I just think <laughs> it's we're going to be fucked by the time she, unless she resigns quickly or like, 
lightning strikes and <laughs> <laughs> she gets struck by lightning. Then. Blows up Tan Dao, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see. We'll find out soon. Oh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. All right. That's that, it. That's a lot of questions for that's, the day. That's all the questions. Really. Any that's interesting 17. characters you've seen this week? No. Crackhead's been dull recently. Yeah, I've seen them, but I haven't been, I haven't been noting them. I haven't been promoting the, the crackhead industry. You've gone off. Yeah, I've gone off. America. Them. America ruined it for me. I was spoiled, like, you know. For spoiled for choice. Yeah, you might like, you might like, let's say a cigarette, but if you were to force to smoke a 20 pack in a row, Suddenly, those cigarettes seem less appealing to you. Did you inhale that whole cigarette? <laughs> it's supposed to take time. <laughs> so, so, yeah, after going to America, it wasn't even the crack any part. for choice. I am done. I am done. I remember that video I sent you on Santa Monica Pier of that guy in the ocean just... Do you remember that? He's... Yeah, 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 just... Loving that could that. be anything, though. Like, you don't even know if they're just, like... He could just be happy. Super religious, like, just that's his morning routine or if he's just actually like Insane. seeing God for real and he's just like, you know. I would vote for the, for that. The I would latter. Say, I would, yeah, the latter. Yeah, 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 probably, yeah. Could be some budget baptism as well. Of himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just keep baptizing yourself just in case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the most important. Yeah. Anyway. Nice. So we're gonna get some guests on soon. Yeah. Episode 11. Thank you for supporting the podcast, guys. Well, supporting. I mean, we haven't got yeah. any money. We're still doing it. We like, like we can eat likes. The the likes. Remember how, how how you support the podcast? You like, you subscribe. And follow my sponsors: No Faff Marketing, ah, yeah, yeah. Rolls and Rehab, Charles Allen Price, Rain Clothing, Frank's Battle Soap. Get on them, Frank. Send me some soap, man. Yeah, Frank. Um, so yeah, subscribe to the podcast, like the podcast, rate the podcast. Same for YouTube. More Do you actually want to vote? Say again. Do you actually want to vote? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get you some soap. Yeah, get, get me some soap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hope you enjoyed, guys. We'll see you soon. Great. Awesome. Awesome.